The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm DJ, and today we're going to take a look at strippers. Now, if you're like me, you probably make a lot of electronics projects, which means you probably cut and strip lots of wires. And while there are nifty gadgets to help you do that more easily, that doesn't change the fact that you still have to do it by hand. And frankly, I'm bored of it. So I'm going to make a machine to do it for me to save me time. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make an automatic wire cutting and stripping machine. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. All right, so let's figure out the plan for our machine. So we'll probably need something to hold the spool, and we'll need something to guide the wire, and then we'll need something to actually move it through the machine. So I think we'll use two rollers. Uh, one will be an idler and the other one will actually feed it. And then we'll probably need some sort of, you know, blade mechanism to actually cut the wire. And then we should get individual strands that have been stripped. Now let's actually go make it in real life. All right, so now we've got the general concept of our plan. Uh, let's figure out some of the design constraints. Now, I'm not running a production facility. I don't need to cut millions of pieces of wire. So I'm going to stick to 100 foot spools of 22 gauge wire to start. Now the machine will be capable of cutting other gauges of wire, but for me, that's a good enough metric to start with. Now, in order to hold it, I'm just going to use a threaded rod. That's gonna be good enough. Don't need to overthink things, and this is a simple mechanical component. Okay, so let's figure out the first component that we actually need to control in our machine before we start getting to designing the frame or the other little fiddly components. Now, in this case, I'm using a NEMA 17 motor, and this will drive the feed rollers to push the wire through the machine. And it's important to remember that NEMA 17 or 23 or 34 or whatever don't actually mean it has a particular torque rating. Although, as they get larger, of course, they're stronger and consume more current. You always need to check the data sheet to figure out the torque rating and the current uh, required per coil phase. Now, in this case, the feed rollers don't have to overcome a lot of force to push the wire through the machine, so I think this little guy will do the trick. Now, of course, you can't just supply power to the coils of a stepper motor and make it go. Well, you can, but you gotta do it in the right way. So in this case, I'm using the uh, Trinamic TMCM1070, which has more than enough oomph to drive our stepper motor and it has the basic step and direction interface as well as a UART for doing some more advanced current control settings but we probably won't need to get into that too much. We'll talk about this later but in order to drive the blade mechanism I'm using this rather beefy NEMA 23 motor that has uh, a fair amount of torque and a suitably large stepper driver will be required to drive it. So that's why I'm using this much larger stepper driver, well, at least larger compared to the other stepper driver to drive the NEMA 23 motor, which will provide the torque for actually cutting the insulation and cutting the wire. Now these stepper motor drivers aren't gonna drive themselves, so we'll probably need an external controller. Now, in that case, I've decided to go with the Arduino Mega. We don't necessarily need that many GPIO for this project, but it's nice to have the option and the extra memory will allow us to have a more interesting program. Speaking of which, well, we could hard code it to do whatever we wanted. That's not practical. So we're going to use a screen. In this case, we don't need a lot of information. So I'm just gonna use a 16 character by two line display. Now, this might look like the common HD44780 LCDs that you grew up on, and it 
is for the most part, but this one happens to actually be an OLED display, so you don't need an external contrast pot, and it looks cooler, and it's a futuristic blue, which I enjoy. And in addition to that, we'll need something to touch to control the flow of our little GUI. I was about to say GUI interface, but I'm not a Hollywood TV writer. So we're gonna use a rotary encoder with a built-in push button, as well as a regular uh, panel mount push button to act as our cancel switch. So we'll use this to scroll through the menu and confirm our selections and the red button to cancel our selections. All right, we're close to actually being able to put stuff together. We just need to choose one more major component. And I chose the other components first because that allows us to figure out our average power consumption. Now I've gone ahead and selected this 24 volt power supply, which can supply nearly 10 amps, which is more than enough for our motors and certainly more than enough for the microcontroller and OLED. Now 24 volts is fine for the motor drivers, but that exceeds the voltage rating on the regulator for the Arduino. In that case, I've decided to add an external five volt switching uh, step down regulator, and this will provide the five volt source for the microcontroller and display. All right, let's talk mechanics. How is this actually going to physically cut and strip wires? In order to do that, I've picked up these. These are 90 degree V blades and they're very sharp. I haven't cut myself yet though. So when you put them together, of course, if you put something between them, you can cut something. Now, because they're 90 degrees, that means we can't actually cut all the insulation off. Let's look at a cross section. Now you'll notice, of course, for the cross section of a wire, it's going to be a circle. And these 90 degree V blades can only form a square. And when we put that square around the circle, we can't actually contact that outer diameter uh, completely or in order to remove all the insulation. So at best, we can perfectly nick it. And if we go a little bit deeper, that's also not okay because now we've cut into the cross section of our wire, which means we've weakened it and killed its current carrying capacity. So we can come close uh, to removing all the insulation and that will still be good because we'll just be able to easily pull it off afterwards. Okay, so we want to move these blades up and down. Now we've got a regular stepper motor which only has rotational motion. How do we convert that into linear motion? And just like a 3D printer, we're gonna make a linear actuator with a lead screw and another rod to stabilize it. So this lead screw will be coupled to the shaft of our stepper motor and we'll have a carriage that mounts between them and that will hold uh, one of the blades. The other blade will be fixed to the base, which will be on top of the motor. And just like a 3D printer, we'll just have a single axis that we can control the position of. Now, in order to uh, keep track of that position, we could have just gone with a limit switch, but I wanted to play with a linear Hall effect sensor. Now, Hall effect sensors can detect the presence of a magnetic field and relatively the strength of it. In this case, uh, I've gone with one that is a linear Hall effect sensor. So we get an analog voltage output proportional to the magnetic field uh, that is near the Hall effect sensor. And this will be our position sensor so we, can, so we can keep track of the position of the blade carriage. Okay, we're close to soldering. Now, I don't have too many connections to make I'm mostly just going to be adding leads to the buttons and the encoder. I'm going to add this ribbon cable to the display and I'm going to solder this Arduino shield and this, I didn't mention this earlier, but we're going to use this as the power distribution bus for the five volt system. And I'm just going to use it as a mounting point too for the DC DC step down regulator and this will keep everything nice and tidy. And behold, the components have their wires. So everything has the 
jumper leads to connect to the shield. Uh, we still need a few more wires that will connect the other stepper driver and from the power supply to, well, everything else. But before we get to that, I'm actually going to go ahead and make the frame so we can test it in place. Now let's jump over to the computer and take a look at that. Okay, so let's take a look at the 3D model of the automatic wire cutter and stripper. So let's start at the beginning. The first thing that I think about when I think about this design is the spool holder. So we've got our uh, digital representation of the 100 foot spool, which just rests on the rod, which is a quarter 20 rod, so that I could thread on this knob that I modeled, on, modeled in that will retain the spool and keep it from falling off. And we've got enough clearance here so we could use a larger spool if we so desired. Now we've got the wire coming off the spool into this little uh, guide mechanism. So it's a little weirdly shaped because I know that I'm going to machine it and I don't quite have the right bits to cut this out exactly the way I want, um, but it'll work just fine. And I'm just going to chamfer the edges right here so that it uh, has a nice little conical entry point. And next the wire comes to the feed mechanism, which has the driven roller, which just press fits onto our NEMA 17 stepper right there. And in order to provide enough friction between these rollers, uh, we've got this little spring-loaded mechanism so that uh, compresses the wire uh, in between the rollers. And then the wire comes through here, up and into the blade mechanism. Let's just slide that up for a second. And we've got the base blade, which is mounted to the frame and is fixed. And the upper blade, which is attached to this carriage that can slide up and down, and that'll allow us to cut and trim our wire. Now inside, we've got our the nut, which is captive in the carriage. So when this spins, uh, the carriage will slide up and down. We've just got some brass bushings that attach to it. And we've got our magnet below the Hall effects sensor. Now this is a separate piece and it is uh, supposed to be part of the blade carriage, but I accidentally printed the carriage before realizing that I needed to add the magnet mount. And I was happy with how the blade carriage came out and it was easier and saved quite a bit of time just to make this a separate piece. So we've just got our magnet right there, Hall effects sensor which is mounted on what I call the user interface plate, which has our cancel button, our rotary encoder, and the display, which just pops into this plate, which is mounted on the base plate, which secures most of the components, including our uh, Arduino Mega, the smaller trinamic stepper driver, our NEMA 17 motor, and this is mounted to the power supply, which being the largest component, I decided that would be the overall dimensions of the machine. And uh, I use this as uh, a way to square everything up because it's uh, reasonably square and nice and rigid. So the plates that make up the structure all mount and will be screwed into the aluminum frame of the power supply. Now I've got the larger stepper motor driver right here in the front. I would have liked to tuck it away in the back, um, but I can live with this design. And you'll notice that the threaded rod is quite long and I could have trimmed it, but then I realized if I kept it long, I could put a little topper uh, that would spin with it. So I made a little ox shape. And last but not least, I added a handle uh, so that we can move it around easily. And let's go make this real. Now you might have noticed that all of the parts in there didn't look like they were going to be 3D printed, and you'd be right, because for most of the structure, I'm going to be using this. This is HDPE, and it's reasonably tough, and it's easy to machine, and I'm going to use my little machine here, my little CNC, to make some of those rigid flat parts.
and nearly ready to go, here is the aux. It only took a few hours to screw and connect everything together. Before I can actually program the uh, final code that will operate the machine, uh, I need to figure out some things to calibrate. Namely, what is the home position? What is our Z0 for this carriage so that we know uh, what actually translates to the right distances to cut and or just barely strip. So let's take a look at the display in detail to figure out what's going on. All right, so here's how we're gonna figure it out. We've got the display set up to show the relative position of the encoder and the output, the raw output of the analog value of the Hall effect sensor. So the encoder right now is tied to the motion of the motor that drives the blade carriage. And we can adjust this so we can take a look at where the blades cross and use that to figure out where we want our uh, home position to be. And we'll reference all the other movements of the blade carriage off that home position. Okay, are you ready for the big demo? Because I am ready for the big demo. Let's test this thing out. And that's it. Wires, wires, little tiny wires. They're really simple, but they were cut by a machine, a machine that I made and it mostly works. So now if I pull the insulation off, oh, I've got a pre-cut, pre-stripped and pre-cut length of wire. I've wanted this thing for so long. All right, so the insulation uh, cutting still needs a little work, but it's darn near perfect for my needs. All right, that's just about it. We set out to build a machine that could automatically cut and strip wires, and I think this does the trick. Now, this is certainly just a working prototype, but it does what I want it to do, and there are certainly things that I could improve. Uh, one of the big things I think would be cool is to add an NFC reader or RFID reader uh, to the machine so that I could put little tags on the spools and then tag them in or out. And the machine could keep track of how much wire is cut from that spool uh, so we can cut as much wire as we want without, without having to keep track ourselves. Also, I think the accuracy of the feed mechanism needs to be improved. Right now, these are uh, accurate to about uh, within a millimeter, which frankly is good enough for hobby work, but I think I can do better. All right, that does it for today. What do you think I should add to make this better? Have you ever made a piece of automated equipment in your shop? Let us know at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. Thanks for watching.